Income Tax 2022-2023 Business Credits. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one income. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, but just an outline of scaffolding, other forms and schedules flowing into these lines. The schedule C being one of them, it being in essence an income statement in and of itself, income minus expenses or business deductions, the net income of which flows into line one income of our income tax formula here. This is the first page of our form 1040. The Schedule C net income would flow in then to the Schedule 1, which would flow into page 1, line 8, as we see on the Form 1040 here. This is the Schedule C, where we have profit or loss from business, in essence, an income statement with income and expenses. All right, let's take a look at the general business credits. Introduction. Your general business credit for the year consists of your carry forward of business credits from prior year plus the total of your current year business credits. So if there are any carry forwards, I would recommend just from a practical standpoint for a new client, for example, and generally if you're doing a Schedule C in general, that's going to make the tax return more complicated. So I would recommend putting the information into the prior year software, trying to mirror what is on the prior year tax return in that software so that you can roll forward the prior year information. And that's particularly useful when we have carryovers because that can help us, the software can better guide us hopefully with those carryovers uh, in that process in that way. So in addition, your general business credit for the current year may be increased later by the carry back of business credits from later years. So if we're not able to get a benefit in the current year, the question is, well, then can I carry it back to a prior year and or can I carry it forward to a future year to get a benefit in a tax year other than the current year? So you uh, subtract this credit directly from your tax. So credits different than deductions and that they're going to be, you know, dollar for dollar uh, benefit. If you had a dollar versus credit versus a dollar deduction, you would want the dollar credit generally because then you get the full dollar benefit of it. Whereas a deduction will decrease your income, which will result in a benefit based on your tax rates. All right. Useful items. You may want to see uh, form and instructions. 3800 general business credit so you can dive into that on the irs website if you want to get into more detail uh, 6251 alternative minimum tax individuals so you can find those on the irs website all right business credits all the following credits are part of the general business credit the form you use to figure each credit is shown in parentheses you will also have to complete form 3800 some credits have expiration dates check the instructions for each credit to make sure it is available for 2022 so you've got so these are going to be kind of specific types of credits like most credits basically are they're going to be for specific types of things the government typically deviating from the general concept of an income tax remember an, a general concept of an income tax would mean that you would allow deductions for those things that you needed to consume in order to generate revenue because the tax should be based not on gross income but on net income that just makes sense from an income tax type of system that makes sense most clearly in the schedule c that's why we have an income statement on the schedule c but 
The government wants to incentivize us and nudge us in other ways as well, which leads to deductions that have nothing to do with expenses that we needed to consume to generate revenue. And, and then this whole concept of credits, which is, <laughs> which is outside the whole income statement altogether, which are other ways to kind of put in other things in, in there, right? Which will confuse things, but also allow the government to, to provide incentives which you may be in favor or not in favor of any given incentive. All right, so we have the alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit. That's on form 8911. This credit applies to the cost of any qualified uh, fuel vehicle uh, fueling property. So for more information on that one, if that applies to you, you can see form 8911. Look at the form and instructions on the IRS website for any of the credits that might be applicable to you. You've got the alternative motor vehicle credit. That's on form 8910. For more information for that, you can go to form 8910. Biodiesel, renewable diesel, or sustained aviation fuel mixture credit. Obviously that's quite specific for the credit. Uh, that you got form 8864 if you want to take a look at that in more detail. Biofuel producer credit, that's on form 4678, so you can check that out on the IRS website. Carbon oxide uh, sequestration credit, so obviously some of these dealing with the, with the global environmental kind of stuff. So if that applies to you, you can look at form 8933. This credit is for carbon oxide that is captured at a qualified facility and disposed of in secure geological storage or used in a qualified enhanced oil or natural gas recovery project. So in other words, we're dealing with the carbon. It's one of the major greenhouse gas type things. One way to deal with that is to try to reduce the carbon emissions in the first place. Another way to deal with that is to try to grab the carbon that is in the air and take it out of the air is, is how I understand it and bury it or something <laughs> or store it somewhere so that it's, you know, that would be the other concept. So if you're dealing with that stuff, you might be able to get some credit money for it. So for more information, you can see form 8933. Credit for employer social security and Medicare taxes paid on certain employee tips. For that, you've got Form 8846. This credit is generally equal to your employer's portion of Social Security and Medicare taxes paid on tips received by employees of your food and beverage establishment where tipping is customary. So clearly, if you're in an area where tipping is customary, a restaurant, the tip situation causes all kinds of, of weird stuff happening. So you can, you want to try to drill down on how you're going to deal with keeping in compliance with the tip situation while also being competitive in the industry. So the credit applies regardless of whether the food is consumed on or off your business premises. So more, for more information, you can see publication 8846. Credit for employer di uh, differential wage payments. That's on form 8932. This credit provides businesses with an incentive to continue to pay wages to an employee performing services on active duty and the uniform services of the United States for a period of more than 30 days. So, so someone needs to serve uh, on duty. So then if you keep them on, on the payroll, that's kind of like the incentive for that particular credit. So credit for employer provided childcare facilities and services, that's on form 8882. This credit applies to the, to the qualified expenses you paid for employee childcare and qualified expenses you paid for childcare resources and referral services. For more information, you could see public, you could see form 8882. And then there's the credit for increasing research activity. I'm doing research on emotions and brain activity. Form 6765. This credit is designed to encourage businesses to increase the amounts they spend on research and experimental activities, including energy research. Energy research, isn't that, that must be with those, with those energy drinks or something. I've been experimenting with those. Just kidding. That doesn't qualify. That doesn't qualify. Red Bull doesn't qualify, I don't think. So for more information, you can see form uh, 6765. 
So then you got the credit for small employer health insurance premiums. That's form 8941. This credit applies to the cost of certain health insurance coverage you provide to certain employees. For more information there, you can look at uh, 8941 form. Credit for small employer pension plan startup costs. That's on form 8881. This credit applies to pension plan startup costs of a new qualified defined benefit or defined contribution plan, including a section 401k plan, simple plan, SEP plan. So these come up fairly often for obviously small businesses because that's the one of the biggest benefits that you can provide to an employee. And also it's often beneficial to the employer so that they can put more money into a 401k simple SEP uh, type of plan than they could otherwise do in like an IRA if they don't have that set up. So you might also be able to look into the credit for small employer pension plan startup as well for that. So for more information, you can see publication 560 retirement plans for small business. You got the disabled uh, across credit, disabled access credit, that is form 8826. This credit is a non-refundable tax credit for an eligible small business that pays or incurs expenses to provide access to the person who have disabilities. So you're doing something specifically to provide more access. Access denied. Uh, ramps, you know, having an elevator that's suitable for for like wheelchairs or something like that might be something that would come to mind. You must pay or incur the expenses to enable your business to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. For more information there, you can see publication 8826. Distilled Spirits Credit. Form 8906. This one sounds interesting. This credit is available to distillers and importers of distilled spirits and eligible wholesalers of distilled spirits. Uh, for more information, you can see Form 8906. You're going to get a benefit for distilled, distilled spirits. That sounds, I mean, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. So I thought they taxed you more. They tax you more for distilled spirits sometimes. But in any case, I'm not in that industry. I don't know the I don't know the ins and outs of it. Employee retention credit for employers affected by qualified disasters. You got form uh, 5884A. You may qualify for this credit if you continue to pay or incur wages after your business became uh, inoperable because of damage from certain federally declared disasters. So now the the government has been trying to put in this these items to try to keep employment up even in a situation where you don't need the employees <laughs> where you'd normally have to lay them off. And I, I'm kind of curious on what the actual end result of this is because it's trying to keep people on artificially into particular areas and, and incentivizing people to do that and whatnot, as opposed to trying to change things. So I'm, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see if that's having an overall net benefit in the long run or not because usually you would like the transfer you know whatever changed just to make the transition period as easy as possible so that people can go on to whatever the new thing is my concern with these kind of credits are that <laughs> that the downturn from whatever disaster happened could end up being permanent which means you just kind of and if you just pay people to be stagnant in the same situation instead of moving on to the next situation may not be beneficial all the time but Employer credit for paid family and medical leave form 8994. This credit applies for wages paid to qualifying employees while they are on family and medical leave subject to certain conditions. For more information, you can see form 8994 for that one. You've got the empowerment zone employment credit that's on form 8844. You may qualify for this credit if you have employees and are engaged in a business in an empowerment zone for which the credit is available. That's gonna be particular type of areas that, that the government has labeled out as one in particular incentives because for whatever reason, low income areas or something like that. So, so then you might have particular credits for hiring people or employees in the particular area. So for more information there, you can see form 8844. You got the energy efficient home credit form 8908. This credit is available for eligible contractors of certain homes sold for use as a residence. So for more information there, you can see form 8908. 
You've got the investment credit form 3468. The investment credit is the total of uh, the several credits. So for more information on investment credits, there's you, it's got several credits involved. So if you wanna dive into it in more detail, check out form 3468 on the IRS website. Low sulfur diesel fuel production credit. That's form 8898 for more information. If you're dealing with uh, low sulfur diesel fuel, you could check out form 8896, 8896 that is. Low income housing credit form 8586. This credit generally applies to each qualified low income building placed in service after 1986. So if you're in the, that industry, you can check that out for more information. You can see form 8586. You got the new markets credit. That's on form 8874. This credit is for qualified equity investments made in qualified uh, community development entities. And so you can check out 8874. You've got the orphan drug credit form 8820. This credit applies to qualified expenses incurred in testing certain drugs for rare diseases and conditions. So that would be a fairly specific uh, credit, I would think. Qualified plug-in electric drive motor vehicle credit. So another one of these environmental type of credits, Form 8936. This credit is for certain new qualified plug-in electric vehicles placed in service during the tax year. So for more information, 8936 on that one. You got the qualified railroad track maintenance credit. So that one seems awfully specific for maintenance of the old railroad track. Form 8900, this credit applies to qualified railroad track maintenance expenditures paid or incurred during the tax year. And then we've got the Renewable Electricity Production Credit, Form 8835. This credit is for renewable energy sources produced in the United States or U.S. possessions from qualified energy resources at qualified facilities. So you can check that one out at Form 8835. You got the credit for small employer pension plan startup costs and auto enrollment, Form 8881. You may qualify for this credit if you are a small employer who includes and maintains an automatic contribution arrangement in an employer-sponsored retirement plan. So for more information, 8881. You got the work opportunity credit. That's on the form 5884. This credit provides businesses with an incentive to hire individuals from targeted groups that have a particularly high unemployment rate or other special em employment needs. So for more information, 8554. How to claim the credit. Store credit, store credit, store credit. To claim a general business credit, you will first have to get the forms you need to claim your current year business credit. So you can research that more on the IRS website, irs.gov. In addition to the credit form, you also need to file form 3800.